Greetings programs, welcome to the grid. I am Sark and today's game is a rook. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do this, but we're going to try and keep it pretty simple today. So I'm going to get my lathe tool, sorry, my line tool, from which we will generate a lathe. I've got a blueprint loaded in here. There's lots of videos out there demonstrating how to set up blueprints. Don't have to have one, it's just convenient. Um, makes it makes it easier a little bit than eyeballing it. I take my line and I'm going to start I'm going to zoom in a bit. Slow my mouse down. And I'm going to start roughly in the center here. This image I have of the rook is not an orthographic projection, so I'm going to have to guess a little bit. If you hold the shift key, you can get um, you can get a straight line out of your line. So sometimes that's helpful. You know what? I can go back and adjust these afterwards. I don't know why I'm fussing so much. So I don't even necessarily want every detail. Let's let's just get the. One, two, three. Probably need one there. Probably need one there. Really don't need all these. Can can go back and put them in after the fact. It's probably something like a straight line. This is probably something like a straight line. And then we're going to figure out our crenellations. Um, if you don't know what crenellations are, they're the things that are at the top of a tower or a castle. Uh, merlins, that's what I want. Right, so the merlins and embrasures together make up the crenellation. Um, which are just like things for people to take cover against uh, slings and arrows of anybody besieging the defensive network, right? So, rooks and chests are very defensive pieces. It's appropriate that they have crenellations. Um, they're the trickiest bits, so I'm going to have some things to say when we get to the end, but Everything else is really easy. It's no different than doing a pawn uh, or a bishop, really. So, go in here to um, Modify Panel and get the Vertex Mode. Start tweaking some of these vertices for the desired shape. I'm going to press W to get my Move Tool. And aside from this first little bit where uh, the camera's kind of looking down on it, I think we can follow the rest of these curves and we won't be sorry about the result. It will look like a rook. It may not look exactly like this rook if you were to hold them side by side, but it will look like a rook. And that's, that's good enough for today. This is exaggerated. Might be a bit much to try and get away with. Yeah, probably need another vert there. So that's no trouble. You're going through and you find out that you've got uh, you've got, you've got um, some details that you overlooked on your first run. It's really easy to go in and fix them. Uh, that's why I wasn't too fussy to begin with. You just get the refine tool, you drop in your vert, you right click, you get your move tool, you budget around, you change the way it behaves. Wouldn't it be convenient if this was a Bezier corner? It is. So you can just change the way each piece of it behaves. That's a bit, that's a bit much. So if you get this thing where it's like breaking up, you have a couple choices. You can go to interpolation and increase the number of steps. But in the end, that's going to make your mesh a lot heavier. Um, better to add the detail where it's needed. So, just drop in a refinement there. Really just to smooth out that turn. Not for any other reason particularly. That looks pretty good. 
Rook has this very subtle, elegant taper to it. This one happens to at least. You know, I was avoiding this, this video because I'm a little frustrated um, with some of my limitations using the Edit Poly tools uh, to get uh, realistic outcomes. And then I realized nobody needs a realistic like chess piece. They just need a chess piece. So hopefully this is helpful to some of you. And if you need something beyond the basics of the Edit Poly tools or the Spline tools, there are lots of advanced uh, videos out there explaining things, uh, more complicated concepts like edge flow and um, adjustment of high detail geometry. So, really, I just needed to get over it. it feels okay now that I'm working on it. Sometimes you just have to get out of your own way a little bit. Okay. I wonder if that right click menu shows up. It seems to show up in OBX when I'm looking at it. OBS. But it doesn't always seem to show up when I publish the video. So I'm going to have to look closer and see whether or not uh, the right click menu is actually helping anybody see anything. Um, okay, this version of a rook has the crenellations much taller. They're starting, starting sooner. So, this will go along with it. That feels extreme to me, so I'm going to go, I'm going to take my half out of the middle here and at least make that bit that tall. Mostly. This here. All right, <laughs> getting fussy about this curve. So, I guess, guess I would like to refine it a little bit. Uh, we're gonna get a Bezier corner. We're gonna make sure we have both axes and just tweak that a little so it's going out this way and not not in. Otherwise, you get a little little funny lip. At least it has to be like 90 degrees. So we'll go with that. And then that's probably fine. Stop fussing. Okay. So um, the other thing that's important is just make sure that each of these vertices is aligned to the center. We're going to go out here and we're going to choose our lathe tool. Default is 16 sides. 16 probably looks pretty good. Um, because I'm going to do this rook the way I'm going to do it, I think I'm going to end up with more than 16 sides. I just think I'm going to because it gets kind of chunky otherwise. So, I don't want to lose the option to go back and edit this line. <sighs> I, might, I might add an edit poly to the stack, uh, which is a non-destructive process. Right? Am I really happy with all these curves? Oh, what's going on there? Okay, that's there. If I was really truly happy with all these curves, the way they are, then maybe I'm okay. I'm trying. I'm trying to avoid a turbo smooth, uh, and and you'll see why in a minute. Um, actually, let's let's do a quick save. And I'll show you why I want to avoid a turbo smooth. So. What if I were to convert it to editable poly? Do my uh, inset on the bottom, so
like that. Do my crenellations on the top. Polygon, do an inset. Or something like that. You could always you could always tweak this later. Uh, like the the geometry in the center, you can quad it out and stuff. Turn on ignore back facing so I don't get like pieces of things on the other side because we lay this, there's a lot of dense mesh there. Extrude all these, right? There's our crenellations. Rook's done, right? Yeah, except it looks kind of chunky, right? And you know that these are supposed to be perfectly round. So you go through and you do an auto smooth at 45 degrees and then, you know, things look a little better, but they're still rough. And so then, actually probably, I yeah, probably didn't even have everything because I had my ignore back facing. So, uh, then you want to do a turbo smooth, but you know, you know if you do a turbo smooth or an open subdiv or something like that, you're going to end up with, you know, the bottom of your rook will look very clean and nice, right? Maybe even two iterations. Yeah, it looks really good. But then up here, like, these become blobs. And that's okay because we know how to reinforce things, right? So we just put... Ring, connect, two edges, spread these apart, whoops, spread those apart and then already a little less blobby and that's not so bad. And then you do, here's the problem, right, so you, th then you do it this way. Maybe. Maybe you try not to make them so crazy. Maybe 85% is enough. And everything's cool except you get these really ugly shadows down here. And that's a consequence of the way that this uh, polygon is being stretched. So... Uh, Uh, let me see. So if I were to convert this to turn on my isoline display, basically there are a lot of ways of fixing this, <laughs> but all of them are super tedious. So I start asking myself, does it really need the turbo smooth that badly? The answer is probably not. Probably there are just less intense ways of handling this. So what I come up with is what? We have our 16 sides. It's a little chunky. So we could always we could always do our crenellations and then add a few more sides. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to still use my edit poly tools, but I'm not going to use my subdivision surface or my turbo smooth. Um, I'm going to put an edit poly layer above lathe and I'm still going to grab this and I'm still going to do the hold control, grab that, inset that, four units, whoops, okay, um, I think four is enough, those, those looked pretty thin on that one, maybe, Maybe six feels more right. If I want a chunkier rook. I don't know. This one, this one was pretty elegant, so we'll leave it at... Keep changing my mind. That's the worst, huh? All right. So we're happy with that. Should probably do our inset on the bottom. I don't know why, but... Feel better if we do. Control key, grab polygon mode. Do our inset. Hit the checkbox. Good. Okay. Wait, it's like I hadn't done it up here? I probably keep uh, just closing the menu and not actually...
All right. Uh, inset. Checkbox. Okay. I'm going to grab the same polygon. All right. I'm going to use extrude. And it was kind of easy to get them. Like, I guess I could have done 32 sides or 64 sides or something in the beginning. Um, but I don't... I don't think we need to. Is 12 a good height? Looks like a pretty good height. Ten seems more right. Let me make it ten. So I'm back to where I was with the chunkiness. But uh, I've got a couple good tricks for this. So one of the first things I want to do is throw one more edge loop in here. Do this by grabbing the middle vert. Just the middle vert. Don't don't draw a band box because unless you're ignore bad facing is on, you're going to get stuff like this. You don't want that. I get this, and maybe I'm still looking at the top, and I think, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted, and then I'm like, got all that. So, <laughs> just be careful what you've got selected. Just that center vert. Grab your polygon mode. It'll give you all those polygons. Then you're going to do another inset. Um, eight's probably fine. Yeah, it's good. Halfway. And then I'm going to delete every other one of these just so we can quad this off a little bit. It's going to make the next step a little easier, I think. Again, it might be helpful to turn on ignore back facing just so you don't get stuff on the other side. Oh, I missed something. Press remove. So now these are all quads, um, and they're slightly, they're slightly uh, obtuse. Not acute. You, you don't want you don't want any um, concavity, right? Um, you want to make sure that any any quad you have is is flat. You know, so you want it to be planar, and you want to make sure that it's um, that it's not concave. So, uh, those being done, I think this next step gets easier. Yeah. I'm going to grab one of these, any one of these, and press ring. Then I'm going to press loop. And it should give me every last one of these edges. It's not what I want, though, is it? I want these. So I want to add edges in here. I actually want these. I don't want a ring. I'm going to grab any one of these, hit loop, and then hit ring. That's what I want. So this is going to let me... I don't need these guys in the middle, though. Okay. Uh, make sure you don't have any of them on the bottom, either. You know, a good trick might just be to delete this thing in the middle um, while you're working like this. But I haven't, so... It'll be alright. I'm going to use my Flow Connect tool. The Flow Connect... Um, so... I think I can just press Flow Connect. Yeah, and they got funny at the tops, but I can fix the fact that I haven't added uh, 32 sides, right? Because now I have. Now the tops are funny, but they're actually an easy fix. So we'll go ahead and bake in that change. 
we will just delete the top. Now they're no good to us now. Turn off ignore back facing. Oh, what a mess I've made. This little row of vertices sticking up. I think that if we just fix them on the x-axis, we won't have to move them any other way. So I'm just going to select that very top row. Um, use a trick. Steal, steal the height of this one and copy-paste it. I guess I could just take the whole lot and make plan, but this is a way that works. So I'm going to copy 88.426 in my case. I'm going to take the very top row of them and paste them there. And it's wrong. So what a mess I've made. Forget that. Let's go back. Let's do it all a different way. Open recent. Let's add our extra sides now. <laughs> when everything's still clean. Uh, we can still do our insets. We just don't have to do the crenellations, right? So, edit pop. Uh, grab the top vertex. Just delete this so I don't have to deal with this thing. Grab open border mode. Hit R for scale. Just eyeball these. Why do I need to be... Yeah, that's better. And in the end, we could cap it if we want. And then we could figure out what to do with the middle. If it even matters, it's not going to matter. I'm always so uh, obsessed sort of with modeling for subdivision processes. And... Um, that's a bad habit that I'm trying to break myself out of, so please bear with me. Okay. Let's do our extra sides now before we make a mess. So loop, ring, flow connect. Pretty good. I uh, got a mess in the middle. Don't care. Oh, fine. <laughs> Easy fix. Hold the shift key. Get the scale tool. Grab that edge. Not necessarily in that order. Cap it. Okay. Figure that out later. So now, just instead of getting two edges on each side, we can get four. If this was like then you would just want to work on one of them and then copy it three times with the rotate tool, right? You just center up the axis and then weld your pieces together. That way you only have to work on one. Or use the mirror tool, basically. It's basically the same thing. Use a symmetry tool. But it's not too hard to click sixteen times, hold the control key, not the end of the world. Hit extrude. It's a number I'd settle on 10. Okay. So I think with an auto smooth, not a turbo smooth, but just a basic auto smooth, which does not change your geometry, it just affects the surface normals. Uh, so it's really just controlling the way that light is hitting your object and bouncing off it, rather than changing the shape of the object. That's pretty clean. That's a lot smoother than it was before. We might call that a finished brook. Now, you know, I guess you could play around with the tippy tops of these and try and quad chamfer them. Um, that's a way to do this. Get my select tool. Grab all the tops. Make sure I haven't got anything I don't want. 
and hold the control key and flip to these. Deselect the things in the middle. Now I'm getting into the sorts of details, like why am I doing this four times, right? You could just work on the one, use your rotate tool, use your shift key, and um, and your ankle snap, and just snap them 90 degrees, right? So I could I could delete 75 percent of this uh, just just from the top view, and then work that way. But here I've done it. Didn't take too awful long. And you could do something like a like a chamfer. And the newer versions of Macs do have like a quad chamfer. And you've got options like rounding it off a little bit, I think. Yeah, now if I do a standard chamfer, it'll actually tweak the shape a little. So maybe that's what I want to do. Right, and you can make this very small, like 0.2, something like that. And it might give you a little bit of the softness of the edge that you want, just so that its edges sort of gleam in the light and catch it. But um, it's probably overkill, you know what I mean? There's a rook. It's done. Stop fussing. <laughs> so, there's our rook. There's our pawn. They seem roughly to You guys have a great day. Good luck. Have fun.